facilitating this beautiful Bible study, and thank you for all the participants who you spoke up and shared your life experience, and just share as the Spirit moved you. Thank you. We were reminded of righteousness, which is basically right relationships, that God created us and intended us to live in a certain way, not just do whatever we think is right, that there is one right way, and that can only be found in God. And so thank you for uh, KK and all the, all the volunteers for always, every month. Just I just want to appreciate and, and just in gratitude um, just the effort that you put into put, putting our communion table together every, every first of the month. Thank you for that. So as we, this is the first Sunday of the month again, and we always want to remind ourselves of our constant communion with God, as Father, Son, and Spirit. And before we take communion, I just thought I'd share a little bit of what I've learned recently about the act of doing this communion, of, of, of eating the bread and drinking the cup. And I've recently learned that this is actually Jesus used uh, but what in his day was typical of a Jewish marriage betrothal, uh, betrothal ceremony. And growing up in the church, I, I knew and I heard that the church is the bride of Christ. Now, if you're a guy, that's kind of weird that you're the bride of Christ. And I never really understood the concept of that. But I, I learned recently that Jesus during the, the Lord's Supper, the, his last supper with his friends, with his disciples, this, he was reenacting a marriage ceremony, which they did not expect. Um, so I'd just like to share a little bit, just to, for us to keep it in mind as, as we take the elements in a few minutes. So G during Jesus' earthly days, it was usual for a, a betrothal, betrothal covenant to be established, usually between the bridegroom. Um, taking the initiative. So the bridegroom will, will seek the bride, right? And he would travel for all these miles from his father's house to the home of the bride and negotiate. He would negotiate with the father of the bride to determine what's called the mahad, or the price. So there's literally money involved. There's a price, which is kind of makes it interesting because families want to know how much was the bride, you know, how much did the bride cost, um, which kind of makes me realize, wow, you know, God gave his life for me okay. by paying the price of, it wasn't yes. money, right. you know, God didn't pay money for my life, God, God gave himself, yes. which means I, with you, must be pretty special, right, yes. that God yes. made, God of the universe, King of the universe, yes. loves you, yes. and gave his life for you, just, just, start to think about that, you know. And so, typically in Jewish culture, the, the, the bridegroom would pay a price for the bride, and once agreed upon, the price would be paid, and just by that, the marriage covenant was thereby established, and the young man and the young woman were regarded, even though the ceremony hasn't happened yet, they were already regarded as husband and wife, um, even though nothing else had ever taken place, because simply, the price been paid. Yes. And since the price is paid, the bride is now what is declared as consecrated or sanctified yes. or set apart. Yes. And so when they go outside, they now have a veil to show to, as a message to other men walking around town saying, I am I'm set apart for a future for a husband. I'm basically, yes. I'm about to get married. And so I'm taken. And so the church is taken. Yes. We, we're not, we don't want to be taken by the other idols in this life, but we want to be taken, we want to be are set apart by the one bridegroom that is Jesus Christ, God-man himself. And so as a symbol of the covenant relationship, once that's been established, the groom and the bride would drink from a cup of wine. And over this, this would be a betrothal ceremony benediction. And once the negotiations are complete, the son, the bridegroom, will turn to the young woman. He will lift the cup and hold out to her, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which I offer you as a symbol. In other words, the bridegroom is saying to the 
is future bride. I love you. I'll give you my life. Will you marry me? This is basically a proposal, a proposal ceremony. And if the proposal was accepted, the, if the, the young man and the father will wait for the bride to respond. If she drinks the cup, she accepts. If she doesn't, then she just doesn't accept the proposal. But in other words, her way of saying yes is not just saying yes. The bride's way of saying yes is taking of that same cup yes. and drinking it. Mm -hmm. And so when she drinks that, she's basically saying, I accept your offer, and I give you my life in response. Mm -hmm. You give me your life, I'll give you mine. Mm -hmm. This beautiful interchange, this beautiful relationship, this covenant, this sacred ceremony that happens. And we are participating in that. It's, it's, we, every time we have communion, we are communing with God. We are participating in the sacred ceremony, whereas Jesus gave his blood, gave his life for us, and said to the church, to you and me, will you marry me? I gave my life for you, and it is up to you to respond. So when we drink of the cup, we respond, yes. So with that in mind, as well, um, we can start from the back or from here, from the side, and then come around this way. Um, I believe uh, wine is on the outer circles, and the juice is in the inner circle. 